Good evening. The school board meeting is called to order. Would you please stand for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mrs. Garza, would you please call the roll? Chair Seberg? Here. Vice Chair Stevens? Here. Mrs. Rott Williams? Here. Mr. Hollinsworth? Here. Mrs. Brooks? Here. Mrs. Spall? Mrs. Brescia? Here. Ms. Bland? Here. Ms. Breeden? Here. Thank you, Ms. Wilkowski. Dr. Newman, do we have any additions or deletions to the agenda this evening? No, ma'am. Can I get a motion for public meeting agenda approval? Chair, I move that the school board of the city of Manassas approve the public meeting agenda as presented. Second. I have a motion by Vice Chair Stevens, seconded by Mrs. Brooks, that the school board of the city of Manassas approve the public meeting agenda as presented. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 6-0. We don't have any superintendents announcements and spotlights, so I'll go on to board committee reports. Uh, policy committee report from Vice Chair Stevens. Uh, we'll present the policy up for discussion and discussion time. Very good. Uh, Mr. Hollingsworth, is there anything you'd like to say as chair of the academics committee? Uh, yes, Chair. Uh, Academic Committee has a meeting scheduled for tomorrow at 4 p.m. to discuss the VDOE uh, cell phone uh, policy or guidance. Very good. Thank you. All right. Citizens' comments. Is there any citizens signed up? Okay. Is there anyone that wish to speak at all? Okay. Moving along. I would like to acknowledge that... Um, Manassas Education Association is represented in the audience tonight. Thank you, Ms. Demaria, for being here. Uh, motion for consent agenda. Chair, I move that the school board of the city of Manassas approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Okay, in discussion. Okay, I have a motion by Vice Chair Stevens, seconded by Mrs. Brooks at the School Board of the City of Manassas, approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there any? Oh, is there any discussion, Mr. Hollingsworth? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Due to the fact that I have a family member on the list, I uh, uh, withdraw my vote. Okay, abstaining. You abstaining. abstain. Yes. Okay, Sorry. so I'm going to repeat this since I messed up the thing. I have a motion by Vice Chair Stevens, seconded by Mrs. Williams, that the school board, of the city of Manassas, approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? I withdraw my vote. I abstain. I abstain. Okay. All right. The motion carries 501. Okay. Up first on our discussion agenda is communications and community relations. The Manassas City Public Schools Education Foundation will provide a 2425 update. Mrs. Radford? Yes. Good evening, Chair Sleeberg, and good evening to other members of the board, and certainly good evening to everyone that is here tonight. In the spring, the Education Foundation came under the Office of Communications and Community Relations, and so I've had the privilege of working with Carol Hart, um, one of our retired teachers and staff members of Manassas City Public Schools, who has now become the Executive Director for the Manassas Education Foundation. And then also tonight we have Jimmy Conroy, uh, who is one of our former students. I always like to say an Osborne High School alumni. And uh, he is the president of the foundation. And so they'll be here tonight 
to share a little update about what has transpired since the spring until now. Jimmy and Carol. Thank you. Gosh, I'm in control of this. That's all you. All right. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Jimmy Conroy. I think I know all of you, but mm -hmm. just for the viewers at home, I'm the president of the Manassas City Public Schools Education Foundation, and like Al said, we have Carol Hart here, our new executive director. Uh, I'd like to thank you tonight um, to present the 23-24 uh, update, as well as some leading up to 2025. Um, I am honored to serve as my sixth year as president of the Education Foundation. By day, I'm also a vice president at United Bank right here in historic Manassas. And I'm, as Al said, I'm a proud graduate of Manassas City Public Schools, having attended Round Metz and Osborne and representing the graduating class of 2005. Um, just wanted to go over our board members here. Um, our first vice president is Janae Monroe. She's um, owner of Professionals by, Professionals by Design. Our second vice president is Sarah Emerson, who's with SWIFT. Our treasurer is Chris Peden of Peden Accounting. Our secretary is Kristen Kiefer of Historic Manassas, Inc. Our, obviously, Dr. Newman um, and Al represent um, for Manassas City Public Schools. Our executive director is Carol Hart. Melissa Boyle from Lockheed Martin. Rosalind Giddens, who's in the, off, or the audience today with us um, from UVA Health. Kim Galansky from Blue Ridge Hospice. Natasha Schur Neufer from Nova Systemic. Paul, Patrick Small from Manassas City, Susanna Steen from Micron Technology, Chris Taylor from Manassas City Public Schools, CTE, Connie Thompson, and Karen Todd from Nova Community College, and Robin Williams as our school board. Um, everyone listed in blue is a new member for this year. Just go over our financials. Um, as you can see, in 2022 and 2023, we were coming off the pandemic, um, and our program costs were very low, and our revenue was high. Um, we have definitely balanced out for this year and kind of meeting our mission to where everything is equalized with our revenue and our program costs. So we're very proud of that. These are the area of focus for 23-24 school year and will remain our focus for the coming school year of 25. CTE received a large donation from SWIFT um, for the Mets Community Garden. We are also in talks with Bookworm Central to support student literacy through 2025. $12,000 was awarded um, via Micron and SWIFT to support um, the bringing biotechnology into the classroom and METS Robotics over at METS Middle School. And we were a pass-through for $41,400 donated by the American Legion Post 74, Dr. Rose um, Association, Lockheed Martin, um, the Mike and Kathleen King Fund, Micron and SWIFT supporting the programs that you can see in front of you. Continuing, we're also supported, um, all those organizations support Osborne High School and METS with those three, um, either STARI, Engineering, STEM, CTE, and PW, or PLTW. In 2024, we awarded $18,500 in scholarships provided by the Art Factory, Higher Ground Works, Lockheed Martin, the Mays Family, Micron, the Parrish Family, UVA Health, and Z Delta Gamma. These scholarships are for uh, the Apple Future Teacher Scholarship, Micron STEM Scholarships, Harry J. Parrish Community Scholarship, UVA Medical Health Scholarship Science, which they stepped up because that was a giant hole um, that we saw, that we saw a lot of applications for UVA, or for health services, and we just couldn't support it. So UVA did step up last year to help us with that. We also, um, some of those scholarships also include the Higher Ground Scholarship, Lockheed Martin, Art Factory supported the Fine Arts Scholarships, and the Xi Delta Gamma Higher Education Scholarship, and the Mays Family Scholarship. Our main donors are Lockheed Martin, Micron, Swift, United Bank, the Parrish Family, UVA Health, and Xi Delta Gamma, as well as the Golden Apple, which is everything um, from 500 to $2,000. We also have some smaller categories, but we obviously appreciate all the help that we can get. And now I get to introduce Carol Hart, who has been hired here as our new executive director as of April. Um, we're honored to bring Carol as a familiar face to Manassas City Public Schools. 
Um, Carol has not only served in many capacities in Mass City Public Schools for the past 31 years, including 23 years at Osborne, seven years at Central Office, and most importantly, four years for me as my Latin teacher in high school. So I'm going to pass that over to Carol now. Do you want to use mine? So, um, as you all know, I did actually retire in 2022, but when I saw the foundation job come open again, I felt called to apply for it, um, mostly because the foundation's goals of supporting teachers and students uh, was basically my favorite thing about my central office job for the last seven years before I retired. So I am very happy to be back for year 31 with Manassas City Public Schools, and I'm looking forward to many more. So, um, when I came on board on April 15th, I basically jumped right into scholarships. And I want to give a big shout out to Chris Taylor and Marianna Bader, because without them guiding me through the process, I would have been completely lost. Um, so thank you, I know Chris is here. So thank you, Chris and Marianna. Um, I also have spent a lot of time reviewing current foundation practices, procedures, finances. I looked at a bunch of old meeting agendas, minutes, to try and get up to speed with what exactly the foundation's been doing in the past year. Um, been working on board development. I was able to reach out to uh, some people who had expressed interest in being on the board. And out of that, we did get two new board members who have been fully onboarded and have attended their, um, whoops, ah, thank you, Jimmy, and have actually attended their first two meetings now. Well, one of our new board members actually also stepped up, Kristen Kiefer, to become our new secretary, which is awesome. Um, I've also been meeting with prospective donors and I've been networking. I've been going to um, a lot of different events when I can. So, going into FY25, we've already had a bunch of donations. Um, SWIFT donated $10,000 to use as additional funds for the Mets Community Garden. Um, Aurora Flight Sciences recently donated $1,000 um, to help support the Mets 8th grade VEX Robotics class. United Bank has very generously donated $5,500, a lot of which will go to scholarships, and then the remainder is unrestricted funds, so we can use where needed. Um, Kristen Kiefer and her family are going to be uh, funding a new scholarship for us this year, the Mason Elizabeth Dayton Memorial Scholarship. That's in memory of a friend of Maddie Kiefer's who died before she was able to graduate from high school. And then finally, UVA Health has um, been on the ball so far. They donated $2,500 to help fund the Mets Fitness Lifestyle Design Program in which they're buying uh, fitness watches for Mets PE students and it'll monitor their heart rates and help them learn how to use heart rate feedback in developing exercise plans. They also very generously donated 550 drawstring bags for the OHS freshman orientation and that had a cash value of $803. So we thank all of our donors so far this year, and uh, most of these funds have already been dispersed and put to use. So um, as I came on board in April, um, I worked with various board members to identify some goals moving forward for FY25. Um, goal number one is to basically streamline our scholarship application process and also to review and streamline the teacher grant process. So hopefully we can get those up and running again for the 25-26 school year. Um, board development, we're looking to add new members to the board. Uh, we've already met with one new prospective member who would represent Aurora Flight Sciences if she is able to join, so waiting to hear back from her. Fundraising, we would like to hold, I know we used to do a lot of events before, at least two major events before COVID, and so we want to kind of ease back into that in this school year. So we're going to start with by holding one major fundraising event, and at our board meeting last week, we voted to hold a pancake supper, which will also have uh, items to be raffled off and hopefully some live music as well. We also are working on soliciting new corporate and individual donors, and uh, we are going to get set up for online and text giving. In fact, we just, uh, just signed on with GiveHub, which is a company that will allow us to do both online and text giving options 
um, from our website, so we're excited about that. And as for the website, uh, the website does need updated, uh, but we're also in the market to look for a new website host, and once we have that taken care of, we are gonna be updating the website um, and get some current uh, information and success stories on there. And then finally, um, we are trying to review and update our current bylaws to more accurately reflect our current practices. Um, and Robin's been very helpful on that. Thank you, Robin. So that's it. Thank you all for all your support. We appreciate everything you do for our students and staff at Manassas City Public Schools. And if you have any questions, just let us know. Any questions or comments for the Education Foundation? Well, I, ha I have a comment. I was going to actually read this in my comments, but I know the two of you will be gone by the time I get there. But I know what hard work goes behind the scenes, and I want to thank each and I want to thank you as well as everybody on the board. Um, one thing Mrs. Hart did not talk about is she had she went all the way to Loudoun County and um, and met with some of the ladies and gentlemen on their foundation to learn more as to how we can implement some things here. So it's a lot of work, and I really appreciate everything you do, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Anyone else? All right. Very good. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, some big event coming up, and uh, we look forward to supporting you. Thank, Thank you. you. Up next, we have a professional learning update. Mrs. Katie Fisher, Director of Professional Learning, will provide an update on professional learning for the 24-25 school year. Yes. Good evening, Chair Seberg, Vice Chair Stevens, members of the board, Dr. Newman. I am proud to be here this evening to highlight some of the work of the professional learning team that led to several days of impactful learning for the Manassas Day Public School staff prior to the start of the 24-25 school year. All professional learning provided within Manassas City Public Schools is directly aligned to the objectives and strategic priorities identified within our strategic plan. This alignment to the strategic plan ensures that we provide a coherent system of professional development. As I share some highlights from the past several weeks, you will see where we focused on providing staff with opportunities to continue their learning on instructional planning and delivery with a heavy focus on literacy. A cycle that works continues to be the vehicle through which we provide ongoing learning opportunities for staff that go beyond the first few weeks of the school year. Learning and conversations continue weekly within collaborative learning teams. Our first big event of the school year focuses on welcoming our newest MCPS family members. This year we rolled out the red carpet for over 100 new instructional staff members with varying levels of experience. Teachers had a full day to get acclimated within their school buildings, set up their classrooms, and learn how to navigate various platforms and tools on their new laptops before joining our professional learning team for three days of community building, training, and planning for the upcoming school year. Throughout New Teacher Academy, the professional growth specialists, Jen Mullen and Dean Stevenson, planned engaging sessions that utilized cooperative learning structures and modeled effective engagement strategies for learners. Over the course of New Teacher Academy, all sessions were aligned to the pillars of the Manassas City Public Schools strategic plan, as you can see on this slide. Four days is not enough time to ensure new staff are experts in all areas, but it does provide us an opportunity to lay a solid foundation by informing them of our strategic priorities and how we work towards those priorities across all content areas. This consistent messaging is critical because it will be built upon over the course of the year through their work with instructional facilitators, professional growth specialists, coordinators, and other instructional leaders. Work around establishing and refining routines, cooperative learning, instructional planning, and delivery will continue as we move throughout the year. One of the highlights from New Teacher Academy was community building and creating a sense of belonging for our new staff. One of the main goals of this event is for new Manassas City Public School staff members to feel welcomed into our community and to form collaborative partnerships with their peers. Whether it was team building activities such as the picture scavenger hunt, which you saw on the last slide, or opportunities to share about their experiences, it was apparent that they established connections with each other that will go beyond New Teacher Academy. 
We also leveraged the DISC assessments um, so that all new staff could reflect on their styles and how their styles interact with other styles. Each day, MCPS leaders took new educators on walking tours to restaurants throughout the city of Manassas so that they could learn about our wonderful, wonderful city and all that it has to offer. We also partnered with the Manassas Education Association to provide lunch for new teachers where they learned about supports provided by the MEA and they were served lunch by members of the extended cabinet and some of our school board members. New staff also went on a bus tour of Manassas City where they saw the location of all school buildings, got to learn about different neighborhoods and the history of Manassas City. Oops. The next event was convocation, which focused on welcoming back all staff and kicking off the 24-25 school year. This energetic event brings together the entire MCPS family in the Osborne Auditorium to celebrate each other, reflect on our accomplishments, and set the focus for the upcoming school year. This year's video focused on how all members of the MCPS community contribute to the success of all students and highlighted programs and offerings that make MCPS unique. A major goal of the professional learning team is to provide meaningful learning opportunities that are aligned to the needs of individual groups. In order to achieve this goal, there is a lot of coordination and collaboration between many different departments. I would like to thank all of those involved that enabled us to provide a wide variety of sessions for all staff that kept them engaged and provided them with opportunities to apply their learning immediately. Instructional sessions focused on topics such as unpacking new standards, implementing new programs and resources, providing scaffolds within science instruction, utilizing the data cycle within math, incorporating AI in the library, developing music literacy skills, integrating literacy and math into physical education, and promoting social and emotional learning in physical education, and there were many, many more. There was also sessions for departments, including counselors, food services, bookkeepers, transportation, and student health services that were all aligned to their needs. All nine schools participated in the day two training for Kagan Cooperative Learning to support our focus on instructional planning and delivery as a follow up to the day one training that they all completed last summer. During this training, teachers were introduced to several key concepts that built upon that first training. They focused on the difference between group work and cooperative learning, appropriate structures that were depending on the functions being used within the classroom, different management tips, and um, they learned several new structures that really could be used across any content area with the goal of increasing student engagement, academic talk, and learning. It has been great to see so many of the structures that were learned on that day already being implemented in classrooms throughout the division. All of this is possible because of the incredible professional learning team that is dedicated to not only providing meaningful, engaging professional learning at the beginning of the year, but throughout the year. These individuals are able to make that happen through consistent messaging across all schools, small chunks of learning within CLT meetings, ongoing workshops, individual coaching, and resources that support implementation. As a team, we strive to connect the dots for meaningful learning and growth. Thank you for your time, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions or comments from the board? Mrs. Brooks. <clears throat> Sorry, I wanted to know if you like received feedback from new teachers, other staff, and yeah, you could so we do, if you could share that with yeah, us. Yeah, we have several. We do several several different surveys. So we have a survey after New Teacher Academy um, that we do that um, that we've provided, and we got very positive feedback. And we even go session by session about how effective they thought that that was each session within New Teacher Academy. Um, and so we use that each year to plan our New Teacher Academy. And we also are implementing this year a survey in our new professional learning management system. After every session that staff uh, participates in, they are complete a survey within that platform. So we gather lots of feedback. Thank you. It yeah. sounds like you guys are really, you know, providing staff with um, a lot of tools for them to box. Thanks. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, I will ask Mrs. Fisher yeah. if um, if you could explain how the different professional development courses are, how they're selected, 
Mm. And if there are teachers or staff that would like to make a recommendation, how would they do that? Yeah, absolutely. So mainly, the main way in which we're identifying the programs in which we're moving forward or providing professional learning right now is aligned to our strategic plan. So all of our strategic priorities that have been identified within the five years, we've mapped out how we're going to approach those to meet the goals within the strategic plan. Um, but we are constantly gathering feedback from teachers through CLTs. So really our instructional mm -hmm. facilitators and our professional growth specialists are always bringing back feedback for additional trainings that we may need to provide, um, if we need to go back and revisit some of the trainings that we've provided. Um, but we're always open to, to those recommendations, but we've been trying to really streamline our efforts to be aligned to the strategic plan. Got it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And thank you for your presentation. Yeah. Oh, did you have something? No. Nope. We're all good. Thank all you, right, Mrs. Thanks. Fisher. Uh, before we go on to policies, I would like to acknowledge um, Mrs. Ms. Tammy Potts here also with MEA leadership. Thank you for being here and joining us tonight. Um, Vice Chair Stevens, who chairs our policy committee. The policy committee convened on August 20th to discuss and review policy options for the personnel code of conduct under Section G personnel. The committee wishes to bring it to the entire board for further discussion. Vice Chair. Thank you, Chair. On the 20th, we met to look at two different possible policies to, um, for the personnel code of conduct. This is the policy we chose to bring forward to the board. This is a draft policy. It will be voted on in our next meeting. Ms. Garza, can you scroll down? Thank you. Um, the draft policy covers 14 different professional areas for all educators and employees in Manassas City Public Schools. It outlines what the expected behavior is and uh, what the expected behavior is and what is not appropriate. If you go to the last page on the draft policy, it does show that all components of the policy are in line with different policies, different individual policies we already have in place. Um, like I said, it covers 14 different areas. And if anyone has any questions. No questions. Yeah. You want me to go first? Just one question. Uh -huh. um, with the um, new guidance from the governor referencing cell phones and our recent cell phone policy implementation should we have some type of cell phone guidance for for teachers in the classroom as they're teaching in this document or is do you feel that that's not necessary um the i just read the the governor's new draft guidelines because we will be discussing it tomorrow they have not said anything about staff or employee cell phone use or um having cell phones on their persons. At some point, yes, we could discuss it. Uh, we would have to discuss whether it would go through the academic committee first or the policy committee first. And then also whether or not the governor comes out with anything. Okay. I figured I'd bring it up and ask. Thank yeah. you. I was just wondering, you said that the initial consideration was between this policy, which you ultimately chose, and another policy, which you ultimately rejected. Can you talk a little bit about the respective uh, merits and non-merits? The, the policy we chose was more comprehensive and covered a wide, wider, larger body of behaviors in the, within the school division. And one of the things that I personally liked about it was, number one, the way it was separated into 14 different categories, but also that it talked about what behavior is expected, as opposed to just what behavior is not acceptable. Um, the other policy, although it was shorter, it was in some ways a little bit vaguer, as in it would say employees cannot do X, Y, Z. But it didn't discuss anything like what a consequence would be. So we felt this one, while it is a little bit longer, is more comprehensive and discuss is what is expected from employees. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Thank you, Thank you. Vice Chair. Uh, moving along to our action agenda. And uh, we have before us tonight our draft 2026 budget development calendar. Mr. Taff Kelly is here if we have any questions or comments. Can I get a motion, please? Chair.
Chair, I move that the School Board of the City of Manassas approve the FY 2026 budget development calendar as presented. Second. I have a motion by Vice Chair Stevens, second by Mrs. Brooks, that the School Board of the City of Manassas approve the FY 2026 budget development calendar as presented. Is there any discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries 6-0. You okay. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. I'm going to go to board members' comments, and I'll go first to our student representatives that are joining us for the first time here tonight. Ms. Bland. She's back again. Good evening, everybody. It's very good to be back with the school board this year. I'm looking forward to this year as the senior student representative. Firstly, I would like to thank Mr. Conroy and Mrs. Hart for the very informative presentation from the MCPS Education Foundation. I know all students greatly appreciated the scholarships they received. Um, I would also like to thank, thank Mrs. Fisher for the professional learning update. Senior Sunrise this past Monday was great. Thank you to our class sponsors, Ms. Daly and Ms. Ryder, for making it happen. It was very fun. And I would also like to recognize that um, Mrs. Seberg and Mrs. Um, yes, Mrs. Brooks were also there. <laughs> um, parents of Osborne students, please tell your children to, play, to pay extra close attention to the morning announcements tomorrow morning. Um, the homecoming theme will be announced at about 9.50 AM. Um, and all seniors, please uh, schedule your college visits through Naviance. And if you have any, if you need any help with that, you can see Mr. Stansbury in the College and Career Center. This Thursday, August 29th, is our very first football game of the season. Please join us at kickoff at 7 p.m. The theme this week is Western. Students, join us in the student section wearing your best Western attire. Key Club is looking for new members. There will be an interest meeting on Friday, September 6th, after school in room 1212 for those interested. And seniors, if you haven't already scheduled your senior portrait, please do so. Spots are almost filled. So, and visit your Schoology homepage for more information. Thank you very much. And I'll pass this off to Amelia. Hi, my name is Amelia. Breeden, I'm the new 2024-2025 Junior School Board Representative. And I'm very honored that I was chosen to have this position. I had a lot of great peers that also applied, and I hope that I can advocate some of their needs for them as I was chosen for this position. And from tonight's meeting, I want to highlight the Mets Community Garden because I thought that was a great thing to be done, and the donation from SWIFT was very generous. I think that it's good to get kids outside and get them in hobbies um, like that. And then I also want to welcome all the new Manassas City Public Schools staff because it's great that there's so many new teachers coming in and I hope they have a great um, beginning of the year and the rest of the year as well. And I just want to say that this year is going to be a great year. Thank you, Amelia. I think so too. It's going to be a great year. Mrs. Brescia. Thank you. I'm going to keep my remarks short because the school year has started and I have my first cold of the school year. So I want to welcome our student representatives. It's so great to have you guys up here. I'm very excited to see what you guys have to offer over the school, school year. Um, our, the, I want, did want to mention that our SOL score results did come out, but those are being discussed at the next meeting. So anybody tuning in who is hoping to see that discussion, that's going to be at our next meeting. Looking forward to that. And I just wanted to encourage with the start of a new school year, it is a great time to get involved in your children's school. It is a, the PTA, the PTO, athletic boosters, they are always looking for help. Many hands make light work. And school, like so many other things, you get, into, you get out of it what you put into it and you will form friendships and bonds that, you, uh, that will surprise and delight you if you start volunteering with those organizations. So I encourage everyone, please, to make the 24-25 school year your year to be in the PTA, PTO, athletic boosters, whatever you'd like. That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Williams. Very good. Yes, and I would like to welcome Ms. Bland back and Ms. Breeden. I am looking forward to working with you this year. Thank you for your great comments uh, tonight. 
Uh, and as everyone gets settled into the new school year, I want to thank our teachers, our bus drivers, administration, staff, coaches, students, families, community members, Dr. Newman, and uh, my fellow board members for their commitment to education. Our Career and Technology uh, Education Program, or CT as they call it, is growing in popularity. Um, I got the pleasure to uh, hear from uh, Mr. Godwin, and he shared that uh, our nursing and mar marketing programs have just about doubled, and our auto tech has grown from 40 to 60 students, and these programs provide job-ready skills for our students, and it's taken a lot of support from everybody uh, to accomplish what we have done so far, and I'm looking forward to um, what is happening next. There's a lot of great things coming. Um, in the consent agenda, we approved a participate learning for cultural exchange visa program. Many of our new international staff is from Jamaica. And uh, Miss Gordon from Jenny Dean Elementary School herself was new from Jamaica last year. Um, coming from Jamaica, a lot of these uh, teachers are not used to our cold weather and they need supplies and they need warm clothing. So um, I uh, I'm asking for anybody who can, can help at all if they can provide coats, hats, gloves, scarves, and better yet, uh, Costco <clears throat> or Visa gift cards or even giant food gift cards. Um, I think that would be really helpful. And you could drop them off at Jenny Dean at the office um, or give me a call, contact me. You can find me on, the, on our webpage and I'm more than happy to come pick up items as well. As the Education uh, Foundation presented tonight and they talked about their new website, I uh, would love for you to visit them and donate there as well. Even if 20, every $25, I think it would be very helpful to the board as we um, gear up to fundraising again after COVID. Um, Thomas Savani said, community building must become the heart of any school improvement effort. And I've always said that schools need to be a part of the community and the community a part of the schools in order to nurture productive, well-rounded people who also contribute to, the, to their communities and neighborhoods as they grow and, and mature and um, grow professionally as well as personally. And I think, I, I think it starts right here in school. In closing, your success is determined by what's inside of you. So I am looking forward to, as uh, Ms. Breeden said, a great school year. And that's all I've got tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Brooks. Thank you, Chair. I also want to welcome back Ms. Bland and welcome Ms. Breeden. It's always nice to have their perspective um, and their input uh, because it's, it's new. It's in the, it's in the building um, along with you. Uh, but yes, as Ms. Bland mentioned, I was uh, fortunate to be able to go Monday and get up very, very early to watch the sunrise with the seniors, and it was just so amazing to see all of them there, happy, positive, motivated. There, there was a huge percentage of the class there. Um, it was just a wonderful experience to, to really get the, the week started, the year started, and I'm happy to see everybody starting off on a good foot. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Brooks. Mrs. Ball is not here this evening. Mr. Hollingsworth. I don't have any comments this evening. Just wish everybody to have a safe holiday weekend. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Vice Chair Stevens. Thank you. Um, I wanted to specifically thank the Manassas City Public Education Foundation because of the work they do. Um, I've been able to attend several of the scholarship ceremonies that come at the end of the school year. And the support our donors are able to provide our students really gets them set up for life and career and school after high school. And I'm especially excited to hear that the process for applications for both grants and student scholarships is being streamlined. Um, not necessarily here in the city, but I have heard out in the community that sometimes it's hard to apply for grants. It's hard to apply for scholarships because they are very confusing. And they often ask for very specific pieces of evidence. And that can be hard for kids to navigate. And some of our students especially are applying for scholarships on their own. They don't have someone guiding them in the process. So I really appreciate that the process is being streamlined. 
And once again, now that we're back into the school year, please stop for school buses that have their stop signs out and their lights flashing. It is the law and it's part of keeping our kids safe on their way to and from school. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair. And I will close it out with, I, I do wanna feature a couple things about our student reps here. Not only do they represent Osborne High School, their students in Osborne High School, but they represent all students in Manassas City Public Schools. So you might hear more from them about what's going on at, at other schools. And if there are any students that would like to reach out to the student representatives to the school board, they can email studentrep at mcpsva.org. Did I do that right? Okay. <laughs> and I also wanted to remind everyone to uh, please check the Manassas City Public Schools Facebook page. If you would um, review the infographics that have come out on the grading policy, there's four infographics and explains um, how the grading policy works and how it benefits our students. And with that, can I get a motion to adjourn? Chair, I move that the school board meeting adjourn. Second. I have a motion by Vice Chair Stevens, second by Mrs. Brooks, that the school board meeting adjourn. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 6-0. We are adjourned. Thank you all.